Hi, I'm Mark Sipp at Crocker Farm Auction. I'm here to discuss an extraordinary example of John Bell pottery that we'll be selling in our March 19th auction. This is an exceptionally rare and early ovoid jar produced by John Bell, probably in Hagerstown or Winchester, Virginia, Hagerstown, Maryland or Winchester, Virginia, uh, circa 1820 to 1825. You can see it has this elegant ovoid form with a footed base. This rounded shoulder molding is exceptionally rare. Uh, I can't recall seeing that in his work before. Um, and it's a very thin walled vessel. You can see just how thin it is and how elegantly potted it is. The most striking about the piece is its tin glaze. Uh, it was dunked uh, in a tin slip and then decorated heavily with cobalt oxide slip with sponging and large flowers these great tulips, which eventually would become those signature spotted tulips that you would see on John Bell's work in Waynesboro. Now after his tenure uh, in Hagerstown, after he traveled and worked at his father's shop uh, with his brothers in Winchester, he would travel to Chambersburg, Pennsylvania and become familiar with the potter Jacob Hart, where he would learn a lot of molding techniques. And then after that, of course, he would establish his pottery uh, in Waynesboro in the 1830s that would last for the next uh, 65 years or so. And his sons would take over that pottery, John W. Bell and Upton Bell would take over that pottery in the latter part of the century. But this was made around the time when John Bell was still a young potter, really showing his ability, um, showing his ability as a potter and as a decorator. And you can see on the bottom it has an exceptionally rare maker's mark, one of Bell's two rarest marks. It's I Bell and it's the stamp it, with raised face letters. You can see the letters are actually uh, embossed as opposed to the typical debossed marks that you find on most 19th century American potter's marks. And this mark is closely related to a mark that reads J. Bell in raised face letters, which you can find on John Bell's iconic ink stand that is in the collection of the Museum of the Shenandoah Valley. And that is dated um, I think around somewhere around 1825, might be 1824, 1826, somewhere in there. Um, and it has uh, a tin glaze very similar to this, same kind of treatment that you see on this jar. And this glaze is copying finer European ceramics, and that was something that John Bell always uh, sought to do, even in his later products, was copy finer English ceramics uh, or copy finer Bennington ceramics from uh, Vermont. And so you have uh, a potter who is really trying to push uh, the medium of backcountry earthenware uh, into something that was much more elegant, much more refined. Um, and so you have somebody really striving to take that work to its limits. Um, and that was, that was probably one of the things that, that most typified Bell's work was that he wasn't happy or complacent with just making standard products. Uh, later on, of course, he would make elaborately molded products and he would use a more refined, almost yellowware type clay with sponging all over it. Um, and so this is an example of his early work really pushing the envelope with what potters were doing with um, redware in the uh, first quarter of the 19th century. Um, you can see that the, the color is fantastic, the condition is exceptional for something that's almost 200 years old. It's really a striking piece. Um, this was recently discovered in Ohio. Um, and uh, it's, it's important not only in its maker's mark and its form, but the glaze is fantastic. Um, not only in a, in a decorative sense or an aesthetic sense, but uh, Bell is known to have produced what is believed to be the earliest uh, tin glaze stoneware in America, at least the earliest dated tin glaze. And that's um, exemplified by the ink stand that is in the collection of the Museum of the Shenandoah Valley as well as this piece. So we're very excited to offer this new discovery in our March 19th auction.